Welcome back to the program Ask the Ministers of God and we are still delighted that you are having us tonight on this particular discussion. You are looking at uh, this particular discussion. Of course, we have done it in a separate program, but because of uh, the weight of the matter and also due to public demand, we are escalating this topic tonight on Diviners and also to Prophets. On set is Bishop Philip uh, Kamau for the Gospel Church of Kenya, that is Voy, and also Elder James Ngogi, helping us to unravel some of the mysteries and also uh, giving us or shedding some light and also enabling you to know what are some of the decisions that you need to take for you to be safe and secure in Christ. Uh, Bishop, uh, before the break, Elder James Gungi had highlighted quite a number of issues that are very pertinent. And uh, how do you look at it? Because there is that particular talk uh, that these diviners have become so rampant. Uh, they are given prominence. They are given the limelight. Uh, is it because of maybe what we can call the media effect, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the true church of God is not there and it is powerful just the way we have the promises of God in the scripture. Thank you. I would like to build from where Pastor James was there, uh, speaking about those extremes. If you look at the spirit of God, is a, is a dynamic spirit. Uh, even when uh, people are speaking in tongues, the Bible says they will speak in diverse tongues. When you see when a church is skewed towards a certain line, that becomes cultic. And so, like for instance, let me speak about the working of miracles. You speak about the miracles morning, noon, evening, tomorrow, day in, day out. And then you are skewed to the miracles, to the exemption, or to, to the exception of all the other, uh, mir uh, the, uh, the other gifts that are working in the, uh, that are written in the scriptures, okay. it becomes cultic. Now we have a uh, personality cult made by those diviners uh, because if the man of God or the woman of God for that matter has not spoken, then there is no word from God. And you see some people, you see some people seated uh, waiting from the man of God because if he has, he has not spoken, there is no message from God. But if you look at the spirit of God, the spirit of God is dynamic. Mm. Today, I, uh, I will rebuke Tomorrow I will exhort. The other day I will advise because the spirit of God is dynamic. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the church skewed towards a certain line, that becomes cultic. Mm -hmm. Like now, uh, this is Lampart in Kenya, uh, but you have been hearing about deliverance. Beverage where deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. With the seed of now, deliverance. in that deliverance, <laughs> you must have a seed <laughs> for that deliverance to be delivered. Now, if you look at those people, they come and they sp say that they are sp uh, doing deliverance to somebody. They will start with the divination. They will tell you there is something in your family, something was done and some few years ago, your grandmother did this and your grandmother is demanding something and that grandmother died long time ago. He is demanding something. So the best thing you can do is go for that deliverance classes. Now, if you go to that deliverance, what they call deliverance, it's not deliverance. It is something we call in English exorcism. And in Kiswahili, we call it wapunga pepo. Kuna tofauti ya mpunga pepo na mtu ambaya natuwa mapepo. The spirit of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, uh, he said, we cast out spirits by the finger of God. When Jesus cast out a spirit, or when the minister of the gospel cast out a spirit, that person is free and free indeed. <laughs> An exorcist will come tomorrow, the day after, the day after next week. day in, next week, next year, every day. It's a season. It's, it's <laughs> demons. Tetemeka, tetemeka, tetemeka ukienda, vingirika, sijui nini. And the rich don't, don't have those demons, it's, it's the poor. No, yeah. the rich mm -hmm. and men is only women. And the poor. <laughs> <laughs> women are the <laughs> the only possessed, yeah. and re the rich cannot be rebuked. Mm -hmm. If you come there with a Range Rover or whatever, you cannot have a demon. Okay. The demon is always with the with poor people. Or what have you. Now <laughs> that uh, exorcism is not in the Bible. It is not practiced by the apostles. It was practiced by heretic people, like the sons of Sceva. Mm -hmm. So we need to differentiate that the ministers of the gospel will cast out a spirit, and that person the spirit was casted from, he is free and free indeed. Yeah. So there is no way that will come later tomorrow to cast out that spirit. Mm -hmm. 
That person is free. Mm. That is a point to note. But with these people, exorcists, they come every time. They come uh, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. And there's nothing like any deliverance. Mm. Every time they come, even when they, when they don't visit the church, there's nothing like a manifestation of spirits. Mm. So I understand, according to the Bible, they are the carriers of those spirits. Mm. They are the people that will come with spirits and they will withdraw those spirits and go back with them. And tomorrow they bring the spirits back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the ministers of the gospel, those who are listening to me, you need to work hard and teach the people that the power of the Lord Jesus Christ sets people free. Mm -hmm. But exorcism is a practice. In fact, exorcism is recycling spirits. Mm -hmm. You come and recycle and recycle them day in, day out. Sure. Yes. Wow, wow. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> well put that. there. Thank you so much, Bishop, for yeah. that. Uh, uh, maybe Elder James, uh, if you can just pick up from where he has left. Uh, it, it is important. And maybe even as a church or the true church, the body of Christ that is preaching the true gospel, even as they continue to offer help, uh, what, what, what the, the process of somebody who maybe has been affected, uh, how do they come back? Uh, how do they recover? Uh, viewer tonight, let me say that uh, one of the biggest challenges of people who have found themselves in such circumstances is the, the power to trust again. Because some of them go through very difficult times. They have borrowed money, mm. loans, they have suffered economically, some of them, their families have been separated. And uh, by the time they came to realize that they were in a con game, they had gone too far. Remember the journey begins very well until you trust fully. You know, a false prophet and a diviner is no different from a magician and a witch, and, and a witch doctor. Mm -hmm. they, they fall in the same class. Eh? Yeah. And therefore they play with your mind slowly but sure. By the time you get there, you will hardly trust anybody else. Mm. But I won't tell those people who have found themselves in such circumstances. The word of God has not changed. Method of healing has not changed. The way God works has not changed. The way he works for you before you enter the trap is the same way that is working today. Mm. The best way we need is to teach you the truth and sometimes we can intervene where it is possible. For example, somebody who has been auctioned. Where possible believers can come together and help this brother to come up again. Mm -hmm. You treat like this one is like, like a house that was burned by fire uh, and you are able to build the house for him. You don't know, oh, God bless you, and uh, God do you well, and mm -hmm. then Mungu uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. mbele. Tufuza huyu mtu, tumweleze neno wa Mungu, na mahali tunaweza kuintervene. Tunafanya nini? Mm -hmm. Intervene. Tuna intervene. Sure. Now, because most of these false preachers, they, 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 they cover themselves so much, it is very difficult to ventilate them. Mm -hmm. they, they make themselves look like God. Even what they say, you cannot question them. And they put a hedge around about them such that you cannot correct them. Mm -hmm. It is good for us, the ministers of God, to provide a leaning shoulder for these people who are bruised. Wow. Let us remember the story of the Good Samaritan. The priest passed by, the Levite passed by, but there's somebody who said, uh, well, I'm not well connected with this person, but there's no reason why this person should continue to, to suffer. Okay. As we look at what to do next, mm -hmm. can we do the, the preliminary interventions? Mm -hmm. We let this person heal. Yeah. We let this person recover mm -hmm. by nourishing of God's word, by being there for them, and provide a comfortable environment. I have, I have uh, been in the ministry of prayer for quite a number of years now. Uh, by God's grace, the bishop has given me the opportunity to lead this flock here in prayers. In another ministry called the ministry of reaching out to the young people. And along the line, there are many things that I used to do as a young teacher, mm. which I no longer do today. Because you meet students who are highly injured at home, including injured by those prophets mm. and those diviners. Then when you come to school, if it's another harsh environment, 
very stern teacher, kneel down. Five strokes of the cane, punches all over. This person is already injured. What do you do with this fella? Can you provide a hospitable environment? Can you really make your churches, mm -hmm. as I may call them, wow. or your ministries, mm -hmm. as places people mm -hmm. can find comfort, wow. a place they can trust, mm -hmm. a place they can feel this is a home. Mm -hmm. I was a place where it was cold, there is some warmth. Yeah. The place was naked, mm -hmm. there is a place I can now dress. Wow. Wow. Whether mm -hmm. a broad dress, as I find my own. Wow, thank you, thank you. Uh, that is quite uh, enlightening, Elder James. As we come to conclusion, because of time, uh, Bishop, maybe you can also address the issue of stigma uh, in relation to those who maybe have found themselves yes. uh, in the captivity of these diviners. Yes. And also the question of maybe even some of them fearing to actually come out, maybe because they've been warned that if only you try, uh, this will uh, make you end up in grave. I just want to add something to what uh, Pastor James has spoken. Um, Personally, I've been involved, me and my wife, uh, in restoring those people that have been, uh, that have been captive to, uh, to those cults. One of the sisters that we dealt with her the other day, the first thing is to embrace that sister and make her part of our family, me and my wife, to make us as one of our daughters. Uh, she was in a certain cult and uh, when she wanted deliverance, she went to one of the televangelists, a great minister I don't want to mention. You know, that minister told that young girl, what we are going to do, this deliverance needs we go with you in Naivasha, and uh, we take a bath together, and then I anoint you in the bathroom. You know, that is, that's our daughter, of course. Yes. And the, so she was so wounded that she, as you have said, she doesn't trust any person. So what we have done in our church, we have made a church like a family, whereby okay. you can come and you have a shoulder to lean on so that we may go through whatever you have been told. The ministers were very harsh to you. You get a father and a mother and a brother and a sister in the church. That's what we are doing. Because sometimes when you come and be, ah, mulienda to kiwa mm. Yeah, there's, well, they will be destroyed. Yeah, Another right. one um, is as, also a sister. Uh, she went to those people in Boy Town, and now she has been going through very bad things. She is raped by spirits until morning. Mm. You know, when such a, a sister comes and says, ah, mulienda to kiwa the best thing is to embrace her and bring her back to the family mm -hmm. and create some confidence that there is a father in heaven, a loving father. Mm -hmm. The attributes of a father is loving, merciful mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. caring God. Yeah. You have been cheated, but there is a father in heaven. Yeah. We restore them. Thank you so much, yeah. Bishop. My director is uh, indicating to me one that. <laughs> <laughs> Most of these uh, so called false prophets, they are very immoral. Most Majority of them are of them. sexually immoral, <laughs> practice all manner of evil, they yes. drink alcohol in the you know in uh -huh. dark places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why they make sure yes. you cannot ventilate them. Wow. Lest their ass come into <laughs> To the service. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. This topic is quite heavy, our dear viewer, and that is why we are trying as much as possible uh, to give you as much details as possible for your own benefit in your Christian faith, in your Christian stand. I want to appreciate uh, this great panel tonight uh, of great servants of God, Bishop uh, uh, Philip Kamau. Thank you so much such great insights okay. and even giving us these real life examples of how people have been affected by these diviners thank you so much also uh, elder james and gog it's been a pleasure also a very good elaboration uh, of this particular discussion tonight we want also to appreciate you thank you for your comments and also your questions on the same we'll do it again next week at a time like this enjoy the rest of your viewing my name is mangicho mola Nuggets of Wisdom with Apostle Dan Gishimo. Physical food is essential to nourish our bodies, but spiritual food is of far much value as it nourishes the spirit man that is immortal. Spiritual food is God's word. When you eat the word, your spirit will be healthy, 
And if you don't, you will suffer from spiritual malnourishment. Remember what Jesus said, A man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4.